Alright guys, what's up? Sonic Soul here, back at you with another video. This time, I want to go ahead and talk about five things that I like about Guilty Gear Strive. This is coming from me getting washed by fame with his Nago Ryuki, okay? So, I gotta say at least five things about this to keep myself positive, alright? Because I'm like the meme where the dude is literally crying behind, behind a, a happy face mask right now. So, I gotta at least do this to like remember why I'm playing the game, okay? If you guys like the content so far, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you know when I'm gonna be live on YouTube with another video, alright? I wanna talk about five things I like about Guilty Gear Strive. And I think the first thing I wanna do is I want to talk about, like, not the mechanics, I wanna talk about just the general menu stuff, okay? The game has amazing netcode, alright? We were crying on Twitter bullying these devs to put some rollback netcode into this game and they did it they got somebody i think somebody who worked on killer instincts netcode worked on uh this game's netcode with the japanese team and they developed something that worked out really well they spent all these time all the time with the betas basically working towards this one solution so now we have you know, even though we got some really crappy lobbies, we have a really strong rollback system, which allows you to be able to play basically with a lot more people than most other conventional fighting games. Basically, instead of the game waiting to keep your inputs and send them over to another person, it'll just try to predict what you tried to do in a situation where you couldn't act, right? So it'll roll back to whatever previous state, hence the name, it'll go back in time to whatever state you were in that was possible and predict what you tried to do in that moment. So to me, I think that this system is amazing because you don't get fucked by input delay, which means that whatever button you tried to press, when you get it, you get it, right? You will normally get it. Most of the time with this game in particular, a lot of the input delay stuff will come from like game design things, right? I want to get into a match though because I want to show you what it's like to play the game online. So we just got a match right now with a Giovanna player and I want to show you a few things that Rollback does right, okay? And what this game does when it displays things to you on screen about the netcode, right? 51 MS, Rollback Frames 1. So it notifies you about the ping of the person you're playing against. 51 MS is pretty average, it's not terrible. But it's playable, right? Like it won't have you won't even notice that there's any lag, which is amazing. So I'm playing this match right now, and I'm having like no issues being able to deal with things. Then again, though, I flubbed on that uh, command grab attempt. That was too far. But he's gonna have to hold my mix again. Yeah, burst. Okay, overhead. I'm gonna throw on wake up. He caught me there. Nice. I'm gonna whip punish that. Plus. Stroke again. Stroke again. Nice. This dude's doing this dude's playing well right now. He's doing good on defense. Yeah, he's trying to get in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, he messed up the meaty though. He messed up the meaty though. But you can see, like, you can see like the actual like the actual information. And the game is running perfectly. Nice punish. Okay, I'm gonna start doing HF stroke. No, time your meaty. I'm gonna go low. Oh, mash? I respect it. Nice punish on the HF stroke. Time your meaties. I'm gonna go high. Plus. Low. He has to burst. I fucked up. There's another thing I like about the game. I'm gonna backdash. Punish. I'm out. Nice dust. Good shit. <laughs> he fucked it up. And he, I wasted my burst because of that. Oh, he had the meter, not me. He had the meter, not me. I was looking at the wrong thing. He's jumping back a lot. With. Oh, he plus there. I'm in. You're trying to jump out. Trying to jump out again. Okay. I'm in there. No, you can't press there, baby. So as you can see, like I have no issues with the netcode. The netcode's amazing. 
If I lose inputs on something, it's because it's my fault, or it's because, you know, the slowdown with counters and with other factors, like RC, which I expressed in the previous video that you can watch, the five things I don't like about the game. But this is about the things I like about the game. And the first thing is how responsive matches are, how easy it is to get back into a match and the rollback itself. And more fighting games need to do things like this. Next up, we've got good old mission mode. That's another thing I wanted to mention. Mission mode in this game is very robust, right? It may be like, oh, well, I, I'm a great player, you know, like I, I don't need all this stuff, but for the new people coming into the game, it teaches you a lot of things. Yeah, sure, it teaches you the basics of fighting games, dashing in, movement, mobility, proximity normals, and unique moves. It teaches you basic stuff, right? But they go into more detail the more levels you go into, right? So when you go into mission mode, it starts to teach you other things. Cancels, approaching the opponent with zoning, right? It teaches you strategies that you can use that are actually used in intermediate to high level play. Dash canceling, Roman canceling, preemptive attack, uh, hit confirming, media attacks, attacks that hit the opponent when they're knocked down already for like Okizeme, counter hits, right? It teaches you a lot of different things regarding the game and about fighting games in general. And this is something that really really needs to be in every other fighting game i'm so happy that this this is in the game let's do like one right now though let's do one that let's say i didn't know about there's one thing i actually suck at right that i can admit i suck at uh where is the one that's for hit confirming perform close s to forward s and confirm if it's hit or block link it into bandit revolver if it hits so you do close s into forward s and then if the forward s hits you go into bandit revolver bandit revolver i fucked that up <laughs> i'm so bad we go back to the Rimorba! Bandit to Rimorba! See that? So you can learn like basic things. Practice until you're able to confirm your attacks during your block string and perform the different special moves according to the situation. When your attack is blocked, link it into a move that leaves you in advantage. Right? So they have all these missions here that you can select from, that you can practice on each level, and you can scroll through each one. At the end of the fourth and fifth missions, you have these unique matchup tutorials and combos that you could try at the end as a way to learn your character and how to deal with what they wanna do, right? So that's really good. It teaches you like how to approach specific, specific matchups. Let's say, how about this? What's something that's so annoying? Let's say you want to learn how to deal with uh, Eno, the Eno matchup. This is something that a lot of people really need to practice. Because I feel like nobody knows how to punish my super. Let's talk about it. All right, so here we are. Let's say a lot of a lot of people don't know how to punish her ultimate fortissimo on the ground, right? After knocking Eno down with a sweep, she will perform ultimate fortissimo right after recovering. Be ready to block the first hit of the Fortissimo and punish her before the second hit is out. I'm gonna try two more times to get it. Oh, won't let me combo! I can't relaunch! Come on, man! So, yeah, as you can see, you can learn some of these things, right? Eno will be airborne when you punish her ultimate Fortissimo before the second hit is out. Head into the training mode and find the optimal combo to perform when punishing this move. So I think everybody and their moms needs to learn how to punish that super. Because even in tournament, I see people let this thing just fly by. Learn the punishes. Learn the punishes. This mission mode is actually godlike. Because it teaches you the fundamentals of fighting games. It teaches you the fundamentals for Guilty Gear a little bit. And it teaches you how to approach specific matchups that would only be known to some legacy players. So, 
I'm I'm happy that it has this stuff and this is another great addition and I think more fighting games need to do it like Guilty Gear Strive where they explain it in a very basic manner on how to do basic things. The next thing I want to talk about which is probably the one thing I think that really hard carries this game is the RC system. So the thing about the RC system is that it's very uh, in depth, right? It's very in depth with the responses that you can have in certain situations. So here we are in training mode, and I want to talk about RC real quick, right? There's things that I really do like about the RC system. There's four kinds of RC. I don't want to go too in depth and bog down the video too much, but basically you have blue RC, which you perform if your character's in a neutral position. So anytime your character isn't doing an attack or is moving around, right? You have red RC, which is right after an attack that is performed. You have YRC, which is done whenever your character is blocking. And you have PRC, or purple RC. Purple is what you do when an attack uh, is whiffed. Or before an attack comes out, right? So, those are the four kinds of RCs you can do in the game. They can all be directed except for YRC. YRC is the only one that you cannot direct, right? What I mean by that is you can direct all the RCs in four different directions, right? This is known as RC Drift, okay? And you can fast cancel these RCs by pressing a button immediately after you input the RC. It's not doing it. So it's for all of them except YRC that you can fast cancel. And that helps in combos in certain situations, right? The thing about RC2 is that the other thing I like about it is when you do a move per se that moves you forward, the RC will actually keep your trajectory when moving forward. So if I were to do something like uh, dive kick and then I PRC and fast cancel, it'll keep the momentum of my dive. See that? Now watch this. If I fast cancel, you see how it kept my, my running momentum or my, my, my dive momentum? That's really important. Now, like I said before, YRC is the only one where you cannot do these tactics. So, like, I can't RC drift out of block stun, right? It doesn't RC drift, and I can't fast cancel. But the thing about YRC is that this is a guard cancel, and it gets the opponent off of you for 50 tension. And if it hits, it's plus 5, right? If it hits, you're plus 5, so you can take your turn. But if it's blocked, See that? You get punished. So you have to be careful. So you can't just do it like you can't just do it like out of the, out of the blue. Like you you have to know what to YRC and hope that you don't get baited, right? But it's another defensive mechanic that you have. On top of the other things that you of course have, you can check out my faultless defense video if you want to look into more defensive things. Anyhow, um, like I said, Red RC is really cool because you get access to uh, hit confirm. Well, you get access to larger damage, right? From something that you would normally not be able to do. You get basically combos that you wouldn't be able to do before. This is so, like, amazing. Like, I, I can't do that normally, but if I have 50 tension, I'm cooking. I'm, I'm cooking, as you can clearly see. All of the four RCs cause the opponent to be slowed down. So it allows you to be able to see within that area of effect what they're trying to do. And in certain cases, you can get stuff that you weren't able to do before because of the RC slowdown. And Blue RC has the most slowdown of the four, allowing you to do combos that you would not normally be able to do because of the added hit stun. See how they get hit there? That's a fuzzy. This is a fuzzy, and you only get this with Blue RC. And this all connects on hit. Fucking. That all hits as a combo. That would normally never work unless I had uh, Blue RC, as you can clearly see. So Blue RC adds a lot of layers to your offense that you normally wouldn't have. And it's really strong in terms of adding hit stun and freezing the opponent in place for a long period of time and forcing them to deal with more of your nonsense, right? All of these RCs, they are good for certain situations and help your character in some way. So, you definitely try it. 
should definitely try it. There are other situations too, right? Like PRC, you can use it. Purple RC, you can whiff something that moves forward, slow them down, and then throw them, right? Like for Eno and Soul, they could do, she could do stroke the big tree into PRC and throw. And Soul can obviously do uh, ground vortex into wild throw, right? He can also do that, just like Eno. So things like that can occur. Or if, let's say, Soul was doing something like Bandit Bringer. It's very important to know about the RC system because it can actually allow you to do things that you normally would be unable to do. You can react to certain situations and punish them with RC. There, there's so many things with the RC system that's really interactive for players to understand. And I, and I really like it a lot. Now the next thing I actually do like about this game, that's game mechanic wise, is throw whiffing. Throw whiffing is something that was added to the Guilty Gear series. This was never a thing. In older Guilty Gear games, throws were one frame and they were tied to a button. So for Eno, it would have been her heavy slash if I'm correct. Her heavy slash would have been her throw button with forward and uh, HS. And she would be able to do uh, 6 HS as an option select. Soul would be similar, right? They would all have basically an option select that prevented you from being able to like bait their throw out. Instead, you would have to bait out their option select, which is by them basically doing their normal and whiffing it. And then you punish them, right? Of course, there were other methods of dealing with uh, OS. Uh, throw tech in that game, but the thing is that you are not reacting to throw in that game It's one frame it, it and they had an option select for it So in this game now you throw it forward and back and dust while you're near the opponent and it's a two frame window So you cannot wake up with it and OS with it What this means is that you cannot wake up with this move to beat meetings, right? You can do it to stop someone like you saw with the geo player before they weren't timing their meetings to stuff me out so I was able to beat them out whenever they were next to me with a wake up throw. But someone who's able to time their meaties will be able to punish me. See that? You saw how I got counter hit? Because I was mashing throw. The other thing too is that because throws are indeed two frames, your opponent is going to have to play around it. And because it has this throw with, you can do things to bait the opponent into throwing. If you street fighter heads know, this is basically called a shimmy. See how I got counter hit? So it makes you really decide whether or not you should take the grab or if you should actually try to tech, right? It's similar to Street Fighter, but there's obviously other nuances to it. The fact that there is risk gauge means that you can't always think about taking the throw. At some point, you're gonna have to decide. You just choose to block and take the throw, right? You're not gonna do anything. You're just gonna sit here and take it, right? Well, then you get thrown. And you can lose a lot of life. This isn't even optimal. This is not even optimal. It's not optimal. But you see what I'm saying? Like you, you have to make a decision because of the risk gauge. So it does add a lot of thought to the throw game because it's gonna force the defender to have to do things like faultless defense because faultless defense prevents you from taking risk damage, as you can see. And it's gonna, it's the game is gonna expect you to do things to counteract these type of options, and faultless defense, like you can see in one of my other videos, will help you deal with stopping this type of pressure and forcing the opponent to approach your defensive options differently. So this actually works well with the rest of the game. So that's what I like about throw with throw with adds a little more interaction and you can't just autopilot the OS right so the last thing I want to talk about here is actually something that I mentioned in my previous video of five things that I hate about guilty gear it's actually wall break wall break is the one thing I actually do like uh, as well about the game now the thing is yes there's no indicator for the wall break so it's hard to optimize it and that was one of the things I really disliked uh, about it but I do like what wall break does do for the game. So when you land a wall break, right, with super, 
it causes a hard knockdown, which allows you to get another mix-up on the opponent, right? And the other thing too is that you get you gain a positive bonus for the wall break. So what this positive bonus does is that it gives the aggressor reward. They want to reset the situation back to neutral from a wall break because they want to allow for more interaction between the players. And this helps a lot of new players out who don't get, you know, frustrated from being in the corner a lot. There are arguments against this, but I think that the game is balanced with this in mind because a lot of characters would be completely oppressive in the corner if there was no wall break. I mean, extremely oppressive given how this game is. Let's say you didn't do super and you just ended the combo normally. You get a positive bonus. What this does is immense for the aggressor so if i were to set the tension to zero what happens is i'll gain tension uh by itself without having to move forward and the more i move forward and attack the more i will get a, a large portion of tension back when you use an rc there's different penalties to using them yrc has the most amount of penalty used or the most amount of time you have to wait before you gain meter again naturally so I'm going to run forward here, and I'm going to disable regeneration. <laughs> Notice, I'm not going to gain any tension. And that was YRC. I'm not going to get it for a while. I just got it back now. Now watch this. Look at what happens now. I do not get any of the meter penalty that I got from using the RC before. And that is huge. So you have to play for the wall break because some you could try to keep people in the corner by lessening your strings, which also helps, but you have to play for the wall break because it actually ties in with the RC system that we talked about before. It's very good for that. So it rewards the aggressor that way, but it also kind of gives a little bit of breathing room to the defender in the sense that now we're in the neutral, so you have one more chance to kind of make something happen. Notice how if I backdash a lot, I'll be in danger, and if I keep doing it, I'll lose all my meter from a negative penalty. But if I break the wall, if I break the wall and backdash, what happens now? I actually did not get affected for a long time from negative penalty. So there are things about wall break that I do enjoy about this game. I just still wish that the wall break mechanic had some kind of HUD on the screen so you can optimize and play around it and it can add another layer of knowledge that people know about. It. Because you're not always going to be in the corner to see the wall break damage and they really need to fix that. But everything else about the wall break makes sense and according to how this game is designed. So yeah. Those are the five things that I really do like about this game that I think really allow this game to shine despite its drawbacks. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Once again, please sub to the channel and like the video, comment down below. Let me tell, tell me what you like about Guilty Gear. All right, let me know and hit the notification bell so you know when I'm gonna make another good video. So I'll see you guys on the stream and on the next YouTube video.